Good evening, everybody. It's Jordan from don'tbuythehype.blogspot.com. Wanted to discuss Tim Tebow with this evening and his possible candidacy for the 2011 NFL MVP. Now, understand this. I, I am a George Bulldog fan. Most of you have figured that out by now if you've read my columns, seen my videos. Uh, you know, nothing made me happier than watching us pound Tim Tebow in the turf back in 2007 six times and, and you know, seeing Georgia. Uh, walk out of uh, the Gator Bowl with a win there. Um, obviously, Tim Tebow is a very polarizing figure. Um, you know, not only do I remember the 07 game, but I remember the subsequent years when we were pounded by Florida. Um, you know, I, I think that in, in spite of all that, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm a great fan of Tim Tebow's. You know, Tim Tebow is you know one of the most polarizing figures in sports at the moment. Uh, but, you know, what Tim Tebow has done to advance the kingdom of God to me far outweighs, as a Christian man, far outweighs being a Florida Gator. You know, there's much uh, greater things to life than who we cheer for as, uh, as college football fans. So, you know, I'm a great follower and a great fan of Tim Tebow. Uh, I'm actually, every week, I, I do pay attention to the Denver Broncos now, more so than I ever have since uh, probably Terrell Davis, an old dog, played for the Broncos. But, uh, you know, I, I've, I've had a great time watching Tim Tebow, uh, you know, just kind of prove the doubt is wrong as it goes week by week. Um, you know, it, it's, it's been amazing to watch Denver go 4-1 and one the last five weeks. Obviously, you know, there's a lot more to, you know, the picture than just seeing, you know, uh, Kyle Orton step out, Tim Tebow step in. Obviously, that's been, you know, the, the one change that we've seen. But, you know, I think a lot has to be said about John Fox. I think he's done an incredible job in Denver this year, uh, you know, and, and turned around that defense. They've had a great defense to go along with, uh, you know, with, with, with a new style of offense, an option style, especially, you know, a, a clock-eating style of offense. I think that's really helped the defense out because they're not playing as many snaps. Um, you know, but, but I think overall, just inserting Tim Tebow has, has added an extra layer of leadership to that team. I think that, uh, you know, the defense especially and the rest of the offensive players have rallied around him. Uh, you know, if you look at their offensive depth chart, there's really not a whole lot of talent there. Um, you know, you can look at, at Demarius Thomas, who, you know, again, a Georgia guy. Obviously, I know he played at Georgia Tech, but, you know, from, from Dublin, Georgia. Um, you know, a first-round draft pick, but, you know, obviously not an elite wide receiver. Willis McGay, he has passed his prime as a running back. Um, you know, no Sean Moreno. Another great dog having a down season, uh, fighting injuries. Uh, you know, if you look at the weapons, so to speak, around Tim Tebow and his offense, there's really not much there. So, you know, a lot of kudos goes to, you know, the, the coaching staff for rallying uh, around Tim Tebow and, and, and the team and the defense especially, uh, rising to the occasion to keep them into ball games, to allow Tim Tebow to take those late-minute um, drives and go down and score and have some kind of signature plays to, uh, to start his career. As a uh, as an NFL quarterback, um, you know one of the things I think that has bothered me in, in, in all of this hype around Tim Tebow has been the seeming negativity of John Elway toward everything. Uh, you would think it, it, as, as a president of the of the team that he would be excited to see success, uh, but at times it seems as if you know John Elway maybe it, it was kind of hoping that he would give the fans Tim Tebow, which is obviously what the fans wanted after such a rough start with Kyle Orton. Maybe he'd give the fans Tebow, you know, kind of set him up to fail, watch him fail, and then, you know, be able to, uh, to, to draft a quarterback very high in next year's NFL draft. I really don't think that when Elway, um, you know, kind of consulted with, with, with the coaches to make this move, that he thought this was going to be what happened with the team. Um, you know, I, 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 and I really don't think anybody has. Maybe, you know, maybe even Tim Tebow would tell you that. I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, to see the miraculous turnaround of the Denver Broncos, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of, of uh, Major League. You remember the movie back in the late 1980s where the, uh, the lady ends up on the team after her husband dies on the honeymoon, and, uh, and, and obviously she wants the team to fail in Cleveland so she can move them to a warmer climate. And, you know, obviously the team there kind of rallies around that negativity and they end up winning. Um, you know, it kind of appears that the, that the Broncos have, you know, have, have done that a little bit, not maybe so much despite John Elway, but, uh, but it's been interesting and neat to see them, uh, them rally around a, a great man and a great leader like Tim Tebow. Uh, now, you know, the, the, the purpose of this blog is to discuss his candidacy for MVP. I, I heard some talk about it today, uh, some discussion um, on radio. I've heard some on TV as well. 
Obviously, you know, Tim Tebow would get some play for this because of his, you know, his, his popularity and just to see the, the dramatic turnaround in the Denver Broncos since he's uh, stepped in to be the starting quarterback. Um, you know, understand really in, in terms of, of pieces moving, that's really been the only piece that's moved on Denver this year. So it would be really easy to say that he is the sole difference in, uh, in, in, in becoming, or in the Denver Broncos becoming a, a possible playoff team. But in reality, I, I really don't see Tim Tebow as an MVP candidate. He's a very valuable player, um, but is he the most valuable player? I don't think so. Um, obviously, to me, probably the most valuable player uh, this season has to be Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, it's easy to look to the best team when you have a superstar that's performing at an all-time level. Uh, you know, not only with wins and losses, as Tebow, you know, has done in leading the Denver Broncos, but on a statistical side as well. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers' numbers have been astounding. Uh, Drew Brees is doing the same thing again in New Orleans, pretty much like he always has since he's gotten to New Orleans and, and gotten up with Sean Payton. Uh, his numbers are outstanding. They're winning ball games as well as two. Uh, you know, one one day, this is kind of funny, I think we all found out this year who the most valuable player in the NFL was, and that was certainly Peyton Manning. Obviously, he's not playing this year. Uh, it's been amazing to see a, a perennial playoff, a perennial AFC title contender go from, uh, you know, having 12, 13, and, and more win seasons to 0 for 11 and quite possibly – have a chance to be the second 0-16 team of all times, like the Detroit Lions were a few years ago. So, you know, you know, it looks like, to me, honestly, even though he's not playing, you could probably make a case for Peyton Manning being the NFL MVP this year. But again, uh, back on Tim Tebow, uh, you know, a, a great man, a great man of character, a great man of the faith. Um, well, I, I will be cheering on Tim Tebow as long as, he, as, long as he's playing. Uh, just an, an incredible man, an incredible witness. Uh, you know, for, for everyone. So, um, you know, again, Tim Tebow, great man, love him to death, great Christian, uh, certainly advancing the kingdom of God, uh, but probably not an NFL MVP candidate here in 2011. So tell me what you think. Again, you can drop comments in the box down below. Uh, tomorrow I'll be uh, releasing my SEC championship analysis along with my prediction for the SEC championship game. Obviously this one means a whole lot to me because my dogs are playing tomorrow. But, uh, but in the end, guys, uh, have a great night, and uh, take care, and God bless.